Okay. Hello, beautiful people of the world. And I am so happy and delighted today to welcome you on the Happy Conversation, the first show with our very special guest, Dr. Grace Lee. And I would like to share a few glints and summary of Grace Lee is the founder of the Mystery Insight, host of Career Revenist podcast and creator of a business and career channel on YouTube. Dr. Grace Lee is also sought out as a speaker and trainer in these areas of sales, business development, career development, public speaking, mindset, and neuroscience. She helps professionals to take their education, expertise, and experiences and turn it into a passion for profit online, leverage it to creative great incomes and impact in the meaningful career path. She has trained hundreds of people from t over 10 countries all over the world using her expertise from her PhD in neuroscience. That's really interesting. Um, and Dr. Grace Lee's method is empowered to discover a different way of thinking to take the guesswork out of what, do, what to do next so you can grow faster and easier. And here it is. Welcome, Dr. Grace Lee, to our show. Thank you, Mr. Happy Baines. I am really honored and privileged to be here. Thank you for inviting me. My pleasure. Okay. Um, as we know that we, I created this um, wonderful uh, online talk show to bring world's most prominent people, successful people, to share their happiness story journey during the journey, and especially the journey, a story about during the adversity and defeat and all. So my first question to you is, please tell us about the best, happiest moment during your adversity or hard times. And how did you maintain and train your mind to remain happy? Well, it's interesting. Huh? I really like the way you ask that question because normally when we are going through hard times and adversity and trauma and depression, we don't tend to see the happiness in that. Yeah. right? And we don't tend to experience happiness when all of those other emotions are so overwhelming. But I will share with you that when I was a child, uh, my, I had a very normal childhood. Up until the age of eight and okay. when i was eight years old what happened was my family my parents and my older brother were involved in a car accident my mother was oh. driving and it was a high speed head-on collision my mom was in a coma and she didn't survive she had a oh, sorry to know that yeah and she didn't survive and in the years that followed that was the the darkest years of my life if i could if i could say it like that what happened was uh, my father, he remarried and he didn't, he told me he didn't have the bandwidth to take care of me anymore. So he told me that I needed to find my own way. And I'm 10 years old when he told me that. So when wow. I was 10 years old, I had to go out on my own and really try to make it. And I really didn't know where I was going to stay, where I was going to go. I had no, I didn't have a penny to my name, not a single penny to my name. And I couldn't see the future, right? I didn't, I didn't feel that my life had any purpose. And so what happened was, I was 11 years old and I started working at the restaurant and, and it wasn't for wages because when you're that young, you know, they don't, they don't pay you a salary, but I worked there because I got to eat, you know, and, yeah. and at that point Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? I need yeah. Food and food. yeah. So I worked at the restaurant, you know, was able to eat some food and lo and behold, you know, I've been working there for a long time. Now I'm 14, you know, wow. a few years have gone by. I'm 14. This older couple comes to eat at the restaurant and they are very observant. They look at me and they say, Grace, do you need a place to stay? Why don't you come and live with us? Hmm. You know, up until that point, I have to say that up until that point, I wouldn't say I was happy. I was definitely not happy. I was depressed. I was suicidal. Oh. And I really didn't feel, feel like I had a chance at anything that I ever could want in the future. I didn't, I didn't even feel like I didn't even want anything because I, I, every day was like, I, I felt that I could just die right now and no one would know and no one would care. And that was how I felt in those first few years. And then these, this couple discovered me in the restaurant. They took me in their, They took me into their home and I couldn't even feel grateful for it because I was too busy worrying that, I don't know if they're the real deal. I don't know if I can trust them. I don't know mm. if they're going to ask, also ask me to leave. And so I don't even know how long they're going to let me stay there. And it took me two years of rebelling, rebelling, testing them, you know, trying two to years. see two years. Wow. Finally, I'm 16 now. 
and I could accept their sincerity. And I realized they're the real deal. And I would say that that was the moment that I started to experience happiness. Oh, and there you go. Right there. It was when I realized that they were the real deal and I could finally feel gratitude for having mm. accepted me into their own home. So my happiness came with the, with the feeling of gratitude. Wow, wonderful, wonderful, Grace yeah. Until then, at that time of the age, you were 17. So that was a long period of time that you understood that. It was very um, Yeah, well, that's very significant. Um, thanks for sharing, um, Dr. Grace Lee. And this is a really, really inspiring and empowering, not only a life story for millions of out there that who can get empowered and encouraged with that. Um, I would like to ask you a second question. Um, how neuroscience can help us to remain happy throughout the day? <laughs> I love that question, right? When, when we think about neuroscience, right? When you think about neuroscience, neuroscience to me is really understanding the way that our brains work so that we can optimize our actions, so that we can optimize yes. our personal philosophies, and so that we can optimize our perspectives, which is the way that we see the world around us. Okay. And, and it's interesting when neuro, the way that our brains function, right? We have a lot of connectivities between neurons. There's a lot of chemical reactions that happen in the brain. And when we talk about how, how neuroscience can help, it's really around understanding why we do the things that we do. There's, oh, there's a lot deeper. It's, it goes a lot deeper than saying, oh, I'm doing this because of, because if I do this, this is what I'm going to get, or I'm doing this because I'm trying to avoid a bad situation. It goes a lot deeper than that. And the foundational thing is that th there's only one reason why people do anything at all. And the only, oh. and the only reason is because we feel like it. We feel like it. Right? And how to address that. How to address feeling like it? Yes. And that's the thing. So how do we, so if we want to have a different outcome in our life and in our business, we have to figure out how to get ourselves to feel like doing the things we know we need to do in order to produce that outcome. So instead of starting with the wanting to have, instead of starting with to, to have, we have to focus on who do we need to become? Who do we need to okay. become as a business person? Who do we need, need to become as a parent? Who do we need to become as a partner? Whatever in that arena that you are trying to dominate in, who do we need to become so that we can do the things? And then if we do those things consistently and with persistence, then we can have what we desire to have. Wow, wonderful. And I really like and admire what you just said that to become, because most of the time we, we tend to see like, it is not really important what are we getting in your job, but it's really important what are we becoming at our job. And also what is not what I'm trying to give in my relationship and what I'm doing for my relationship is that what we are becoming in our relationship. So the becoming part is very powerful. I love that. Yeah. And once, well, once you say that, you know, um, they, they should focus on that, how becoming part. What is the first key things they should, they should know or practice? Because most of the time we know that this is what I want to do or become, but then still we procrastinate. How would you, you like to spread some light on that? Yeah, sure, absolutely. And, I, and it's interesting, you, you said that we still procrastinate, right? And people yeah. view procrastination as a problem. But yeah. procrastination is not the problem. There is no, nobody is suffering from procrastination as a problem. Procrastination hmm. is not a problem. Procrastination is a symptom of a problem. If you, hmm. are, if you are procrastinating on the things you know you need to do, there's a deeper root to that. Procrastination is just a symptom. And what is happening is that there is a feeling of anxiety. Right? anxiety. Oh. When, what happens when you're experiencing anxiety is that you have doubt that you can produce the outcome you need to produce. You have okay. doubt that what you, are going, what you are working on is going to succeed, or you have doubt that the book you're writing is going to sell. <laughs> so therefore, you procrastinate on writing that book. You procrastinate on doing that thing because there is the belief of doubt. And when, oh. so what happens is that you have this belief of doubt, which is the frame that you put around the event or the situation that is external to you. And that doubt creates the feeling of anxiety. And anxiety is this, all this wasted energy. Imagine right, when you're anxious, what happens, right? Your heart beats faster. You start to sweat. Your pupils are dilating. It's kind of like you ran a mile. If you, it, it, it looks like you ran a mile. So that's like energy that is wasted on worrying about an outcome that you don't even know is going to happen. That's what anxiety okay. is. So anxiety is the feeling that is produced from a belief of doubt. And anxiety produces procrastination. It produces paral paralysis. 
Wow. Because now what's happening is you're wasting all this energy on worrying about the thing, and that energy you could have done, you could have used to be able to do the thing to do the thing that you want to do, and now you've yes. you've expended that energy in anxiety. Yeah. So you see, procrastination is just the symptom of the root of the problem. Wow, so it's kind of phobia of fear, like kind of yeah. It's a doubt. It's a doubt. Yeah. Great. Well, that's that's a very powerful.、Um, Answer you have given right there. Well,、uh, another question is for you. In order to achieve massive success in personal life, what are the daily disciplines one should do? Daily、uh, discipline. Just... Let me let me repeat that question. What what in order to achieve massive success in personal life, what are the daily disciplines one should do? Got it. Okay. So here here's the thing. Success in personal life. That. That is a values question. I would say that success in personal life. If I talked about success in personal life, and if you talked about success in personal life, and someone else talked about success in personal life, we're going to have three different. We're going to have three different renditions、yeah. of what success in personal life looks like. And so I always say that first of all, you got to start with clarity. Start with clarity. What、yeah. is what is that success look like? What does it feel like? Where do you where you where are you going to be? What is the what is the desired end state? Yes. And the desired end state is what is the end state that you will be in, where you can say that yes, I have a successful personal outcome. Yeah. And then you reverse engineer from that because everything that where you, the place you are at right now and the place、yes. that you deem to be your desired end state, the difference between those two is what you have not learned and implemented yet. That's、Excellent. the difference between you. So then it's all it starts with learning, but the, well, but、yeah. the purpose of learning is not just to collect knowledge. The purpose of learning is, and that's what we've been we've been taught in the education system. And I've been、True. there for a long time, as you can see, but the wall <laughs> behind my back, right? The education system trains us to believe that the purpose of learning is just to collect knowledge. But the purpose of learning is not just to collect knowledge. The true purpose of learning is mastery. Interesting. Having knowledge, knowledge is useless in and of itself. Applied knowledge brings wisdom, and wisdom,、Lovely. and wisdom makes the world go around. Yeah, is the skill sets that you need to develop to achieve、yeah. mastery in your domain. Wow, profound! Such a profound answer. And when you said that、uh, applied knowledge, so would you like to highlight a little more when, when,、uh, as you say, like applied knowledge means a continued action towards your knowledge, or what exactly you mean by applied knowledge, so that the audience can understand a little more. Okay, so I have a PhD. I have a master's、okay. degree and a PhD as well. Not a single day in any of my college classes, they did not spend a single day teaching us how to turn our knowledge into money in the bank. They never、wow. spent a single day on money. All、okay. they do in college and in high school and in elementary school is they teach you the subject matter, and then they、okay. give you an exam to make sure that you have memorized it. Right. That's, <laughs> That's true. Right, that's an accumulation of knowledge, and、yes. then then you graduate. They give you your piece of paper. They say congratulations, and then they go go, and then they say go, make something、yeah. of your life. Go and turn your life into something spectacular. And students at the highest education level, at the PhD level, they're like, what am I gonna do? They're, they're what do I do now? And they just、yeah. apply after job after job after job, and then they go to their job and they just do the thing. They do it that they're told, and so applied knowledge. Is not just learning the subject matter. That's the beginning of it. Applied knowledge is taking all of those data points, right? When you're in classroom, you're collecting all these data points. You're collecting all、Truth. these facts, right? These truths: physics, chemistry,、um, uh, history. Those are like the data points of truth. You're taking the truth, and what you're doing is you are assimilating them. You、okay. assimilate those facts into an understanding. Of that body of knowledge, now you have a knowledge base. You have an understanding, and you take that understanding, you apply that understanding into the real world, and that is what develops into skill sets. Now you、wow. have these skill sets. You take these skill sets now, and then you go and you keep applying them, applying them in your in your industry, in your industry. field, and that becomes experience. Now,、wow. what happens when you gain it more? I mean, you keep doing that over the years. Your experience grows, it expands, and now you have you are unconsciously competent. In the skills that you have acquired, and you、yeah. have confidence in what you have, com- you have con- competent- competently accomplished、yeah. because of the fruit of your life. Like that、yeah. is how it works. Wow! Brilliant. Well, well said. Yeah.、Uh, 
Um, another question is to you uh, related to that, but in order to achieve massive success or uh, best results in professional career, what are the daily discipline one should do? So we talked about the personal success, like in my personal growth and personal life. How about the professional career? What one should do daily as a daily discipline in order to achieve really good success in a professional career? Okay. When you're talking about professional career, are you talking about like, for example, working for a company or professional career as your own entrepreneur or your as a business owner? Like, now that's a really key point you address it. So how about you can share both quickly, like on that. So let's say somebody is doing nine to five and it is for him or her is also a professional career. Okay. My career is I want to do, uh, I want to stay remain the rest of my life as an employee and they're good and wonderful. There are a lot of perks, company gives and all that's nice. So for them, they're, that's their professional career. But entrepreneurs and all, they're self-employed and they have their own business and all. So can you highlight like on a, like people who are doing nine to five as a professional career? So what are the daily disciplines they can do daily in order to get massive success? Okay, if you're if you're listening to this and you are work you're in a nine to five job right now, you're working for a company and you want to have success in your professional career, the number one thing you have to understand is that you're working for a company, yes, but the company is made up of people. You're working for somebody. You're not working for a company. And that somebody has needs. Again, it goes back to understanding human needs and understanding the nature of the way our brains work. So whoever you are working under, which is your immediate report, you call it as manager, my manager, my supervisor, my boss, that person has their own invested interest in their own career path as well. So it would serve you well to understand what is it that they desire out of their own career path because they, as, as managers, as supervisors, they want to look good in front of their boss because your supervisor has a boss. Your, your manager has a boss, right? Unless, of course, you are an executive level professional and your yeah. boss is the CEO and the owner of the company and that's already on the top, right? Unless that is the case. But still, most case, most of the time is not. Most of the time you are a certain number of degrees separated from the CEO and your direct report is not the CEO. Most of the time is like that. So first of all, it's understanding what are their direct needs and how can you, as a member of their team, serve them to help them to achieve their needs. And the better you can do that and the better you can ask for help, realizing that it's a strength to do so. And the better that you can lead your team and lead yourself, then the, okay. uh, the greater success you will experience inside of your career, right? So that means to, to yeah, go ahead, sorry. Okay. So I want to say that this is, so these are the daily disciplines that uh, you are emphasizing on asking, by asking how can I improve in my uh, department or sector with your, with your upper level boss and manager and all. Correct. So taking initiative to ask every day, how can I improve my service? How can I serve you better? So these are the one daily disciplines you would like to highlight. Correct. Is that so, right? So asking every day might might sound like you didn't get it the first yeah, time. Yeah, I know. Long. So I wouldn't say yeah. I wouldn't say you ask that every day, but it is it is it is every day understanding and having a metric on how you are doing, how you True. are improving, because because there are KPIs, True. even though your job is not numerically based, there's going to be KPIs based on yeah. your performance. So you have to understand right from the get go what does it take to succeed in this role, and. True. There's two questions. What does it take to succeed in this role as the measure point of getting your team or the company to the, where they want to be as solving the problems they have? And secondly, how do, what does it take to succeed in the role in terms of the personal level of your direct yeah. supervisor or manager that they will deem you important and, like and hard to replace? Replace them. Yes, so true. So how would, how would, like, how, can you highlight on now the people who are self-employed and entrepreneurs are in order to achieve massive success in their career, in a professional career, what they should do as a daily discipline. Yeah. Every day, every day, it is important that you have a message, that you understand that there is a group of people in this huge marketplace that you can serve and you can't serve everybody. It's around how do you get a message out there that resonates yeah. with the people that you know you can bring a result to in such sure. a way that they feel that you are speaking directly to them. Mm-hmm. And they, and you see, if you're able to articulate and uncover the value of what you do as an entrepreneur and you do yes. it so well, they will be willing to exchange the money they have in their pocket. Okay. If they value the outcome you can provide more than they value keeping the money in their pocket, then they will. Then that's when the value exchange happens. So your deal is to get good 
at make at creating the desire in your marketplace to buy what you have to offer, knowing that they're not investing in you, they're investing yes. in their future outcome it's through true. you. True. Right. And Very so true. you might be thinking to yourself, and, and as you're hearing this, you might be thinking, well, I don't want to play that game. I'm not good at sales. I don't <laughs> want to play that game. But here's the thing: you play, you're going to play that game either way. You either yes. play that game in the company, in which case the company is your marketplace, or you play that game as an entrepreneur and the, and the, the world the, is your marketplace. So either way, you're playing that game in terms of understanding your marketplace. Wow, that's brilliant. That's very good. Um, next question is, um, mo- as you know that mostly young adults suffer from depression these days, what advice would you like to have for them so that can, they can be healthy and happy? So, you know, now this generation is too much of work pressure and cooling from cooling to young adults, especially, you know, young adults. They get really frustrated and they get depressed these days and all. So what advice do you have for them so that they can be happy and healthy? Yeah, and that's a great question. That's really a great question. Thank you. You know, I would say that because there's so much that's going on in the world. There's so much that's happened last year and so much uncertainty. And it seems like there's a lot more uncertainty. But here's the thing about uncertainty. I mean, a lot of times that uncertainty is what causes depression, right? But here's what I'll say about uncertainty. We are always going to be uncertain of anything and everything that happens outside of us. Because the only thing we have control over is what we do, what we think, what we're going to do, right? And so if you think about it, before the pandemic, after the pandemic, we never had control over anything outside of us anyway. So the level of uncertainty is actually the same. The level of uncertainty we have in the future and in the world is is still the same. What changed was the context of that uncertainty. That's it. Because we can only be certain about what we're going to do, what we're going to think. And so that hasn't changed, but we perceive that it has because of the context of the world in the pandemic. So here's what I'll say. Very simply what you can do is to focus on the outcome you desire and, wow. and don't spend any energy on the outcome you don't desire. Wonderful. Wow. What a wonderful answer. Well, thanks so much for this um, wonderful answer, especially I hope young adults can focus on that. Okay. Before we jump into our next session, which will be um, here. So another question is for you. What daily discipline one should do every day to avoid drifting and procrastination? Because now a whole lot of things we discussed here now, because as you said, we have to become something. We need to take applied action to apply uh, uh, the knowledge towards whatever we have in order to not to get depressed and all. I think that most of the things which we don't achieve in our life is because of procrastination or drifting. So what one should do that to avoid procrastination and drifting in order to become really happy and healthy in personal life and professional life. So please share with that. I would love to. That's a really great question. And it it piggybacks off of what we talked about earlier in terms of what what I believe to be procrastination and that procrastination is a symptom of a root problem, right? And it goes back to that. So here's what I will say. Doubt is a belief. Yes. The opposite of doubt is faith. Doubt and faith are both beliefs. So what happens when you choose faith? When you choose faith, it means that you trust in the outcome that you don't, that you don't see yet, but you trust in the outcome. You have a vision towards what is not, is going to, is, does not exist yet, but you already own and you take ownership of that outcome before you even know the path. And that okay. is faith. So you, you take, you, you, if you choose faith as a belief instead of doubt, what happens is that it creates a feeling. Now, doubt creates the feeling of anxiety. We talked about that earlier. The yeah. feeling that faith creates is joyful anticipation. Joyful wow. anticipation is exactly what happens on Christmas morning. The night before Christmas, if you, if, you, if you have kids, if some of you are listening to this who have kids, what happens on, on Christmas Eve, your kid just can't sleep because they're too excited <laughs> for Christmas morning. So that, true. That, my friends, is joyful anticipation. What happens, why they can't sleep is because they have too much energy. So yes. joyful anticipation is creating energy, the energy you need to do what you need to do. So faith creates the feeling of joyful anticipation, which creates more energy. And the result of that is now you have power. Instead power. of paralysis, anxiety creates paralysis, which is, which is basically procrastination, which is a symptom. Faith then 
creates the function of power. Now you have the energy to do what you need to do. Wow, that's powerful. So do you think it's too, it sounds very really similar, procrastination and drifting. Would you like to highlight on why people drift most of the time, even in their old age too? And especially with younger dogs, they're unsure about what I'm going to do after school. And when they reach to school, then they don't, they're unsure about what course or uh, major I should be taking in the college and university. And once they finish the university, they're unsure. Again, they're drifting and they're not sure about what exactly line of field I should be going. Can you just highlight a key um, uh, a kind of a principle or secret or a method that one should not drift? And what is drifting, why it causes drifting and how we can overcome drifting? It's interesting. When you said drifting, I had a different image. I had a different understanding of drifting. My, my understanding of drifting was when they start out strong. And then eventually it either plateaus or they feel like it's taking uh, three steps forward and five steps back, right? So that was my understanding of drifting. But either way, either way, if, if the drifting, if the cause of the drifting, like you said in your question, was around not really sure what they want to do, right? Having uncertainty, you know, trying all these different things like throwing spaghetti against the wall, seeing what sticks, then the antidote to that is clarity, yeah. Here's, here's the thing about the GPS. You know, we all have GPS on our phones. If yeah. we go somewhere, and this could be the metaphorical, I want to go somewhere in life as well. What do you need? Yeah. You need two points. You need clarity on where exactly you want to go. And you need yeah. to know clarity on what your starting point is. Yeah. A lot of folks don't know what they're starting from. And they don't know exactly where they want to go. So now you choose, you, once you have those two points, you enter them into the GPS, right? Yeah. And then what? The GPS asks you, choose your route. Do you want to take the scenic route? Do you want to avoid freeways? Do you want to do the shortest time or the shortest distance? The choice of the path there is your game plan. Without a game plan, what happens is people have a false start. If you don't have a game plan, in the beginning, maybe you are doing things. You have the energy, you're doing things, you're doing things, and you're throwing spaghetti, and you're saying, oh, this looks like it sticks, so you do there. But what happens is later on, you get this plateau, or all of a sudden, the results don't seem as quickly evolving as they, used, they were in the beginning, and that's called a false start. A false start happens when you don't have a game plan, when you don't have a system to follow. Wow. That's very really profound, yeah. And why, why does it cause drifting, especially in young adults, do you think? why they're unsure about their career path and they, they feel because of the uncertainty and unsure about the career path and then the personal life choosing the occupation or where they want to work or do job or business, why they're unsure, why they drift. Because I believe that that's the major cause of unhappiness. And that's why they're not happy. And by the time from 15 to 25 and 30, that's a big chunk of year and they still remain unhappy during that year of time. And they seek in the future that at some point, if I'll get something, I'll be happy. What is the major reason where we, we, you, you find here, the young adults, they feel unhappy during while drifting? Yeah, and it's, and it's a great question. Happy and I would say that generally, it, it seems like young adults struggle with this. But you know, yeah. I've talked to a lot of senior executives, you know, people who have 40 years in their job, and they wake up in their 50s, and they also feel like they've drifted. So it is, yeah. it's not that it doesn't exist yeah. in older adults. But your, your question was on younger adults. I would say this, Happy, if you're listening to this right now, and you are, you know, you are in your 20s, right, or you are in your in your teens, late teens, right. And you're feeling yeah. like, why can't I get a footing in my career? Why can't I figure it out? You know, I, I don't think I have any passions or I have way too many passions. I don't know which one to, 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 to choose, right? True. If you're feeling, yeah. I will say, it's not your fault. True. It's not your fault because the education system has programmed us to believe that the only way to make money, the only way to find personal fulfillment is to go to school, get good grades and get a good job. That's what they've wow. been programming us. And they don't teach us the more fundamental things in school, like what's important to me? What do I value? What are my personal values? And they also don't teach us how to manage what we have, how to manage our resources, how to be resourceful. They don't teach us those things. Wow, interesting. And they, yeah, they don't, and that's, that's why it's not your fault. So I would say that there are a few pieces you need to take your career to the next level. You need to have a vision, first of all. You need to have a vision of what doesn't exist yet, but is a possibility. 
right? You need to yeah. also have a, um, you need to also have skill sets. What yeah. skill sets do you need to develop so that you can do what you need to do and turn yeah. the, that knowledge you've worked so hard to get <clears throat> wisdom. And then therefore you can have it elevate your confidence in that, in that industry. And the third yeah. thing you need to have, the piece that you need to have, right, is resourcefulness. Oh, resourcefulness. That's good. Because it's never a lack of resources. It's never a lack of yeah. resources. It's always a lack of resourcefulness. So true. Right? And so what, it, I talked about earlier. Yeah, that's, that's really beautiful. You, uh, beautiful you said that. Yeah, resourceful. Being resourceful at any age of time that can put us on a higher bracket of success in personal and professional life. <clears throat> in order to become resourceful, like, you know, um, as you said, become a valuable person. And valuable person, people usually are more attractive. I have a two questions at this uh, time for you. Um, how can a man can become more attractive? How can a man become more and, you know, attractive? So that he can, he can use his resources and he can use his more value to serve others. Okay, so do you mean like attractive to his clients? Towards clients and towards his family, friend, towards society, and wherever he approaches in personal life and professional life, how can he be more attractive so that he can use his value and his uh, more uh, wisdom and, and, and his also knowledge as well? Okay, so there's, there's a distinction I need, to, I need to clarify. When you say a person of value, a person is valuable, yes. here's what I'll say. There, there's two sides of the coin here. We are all, okay, in, there's something called intrinsic value and there's extrinsic value. Intrinsically, we are <clears> priceless. <throat> Every human being has intrinsic value and that value is priceless. So you yes. have value no matter what. And then there's the extrinsic value, which is the value you have in your skill sets, your education, your enthusiasm, your expertise. Those things are, make up your extrinsic value. And the value of that determines your attractiveness to somebody. A spouse, a potential boss, a potential business partner, right? It determines your attractiveness. And the one thing that you can do to increase, to elevate your attractiveness is to recognize that your opinion doesn't matter. The only opinion that matters is the person you want to raise your attractiveness to. Okay. So if you want to so, raise your attractiveness to that person, then, it's important to understand what they value. True. And will you say that when I was considering a man, I don't want to confuse the, our audience that, was this applicable for both gender, men and women? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Oh, That's absolutely. great. Absolutely. Great. So um, let's jump on to our, um, another question. Um, what what advice would you give specifically to women out there so that they can utilize their knowledge and wisdom and to become more attractive, yeah. especially I, to women? <laughs> sure, I, I love that. I love that question. I love that question. You know, you know, women. You know, as 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 a woman and as a career coach for more than ten years, what I have found to be true is that women tend to suffer from this thing that I like to call. I'm just meitis, which is the inflammation of the I'm just me gland, right? Like I'm nothing special, right? Look at her or look at him. I can never do that. You know, I, you know, I, I, I know what I know and there's nothing, no one will, no one can, I can't charge what I want for my knowledge. So the first thing that I would say is to understand that your knowledge has value. Understand, first of all, your intrinsic value is priceless. So you're not, if, you're, if you want to go into entrepreneurship, it's not that you're charging, you're going to charge your worth. No one can afford you because you're priceless. Yeah. What you are charging for, <clears throat> what you're asking for the salary for, if, it, if it's in, in a career, is you are charging the worth, not your yeah. worth, the worth of what you know, the worth of your life experience. Like, wouldn't you believe, would, you know, don't you believe that one intelligent person could teach another intelligent person Perfect, how, to, how to do something they know how to do, right? Does that yeah. make sense? Right. Learn, so, teach, practice. Yeah. <laughs> if, if I'm intelligent, you're intelligent, and I know how to do something, and you want to learn from me how to do something, isn't it true that I could teach you how to do something I know how to do? Right. So true, for, for true. right, if, if, if for women, we're oftentimes, we don't, we, we, we don't see the value of what we have. So if we learn, if we, if first of all, if we recognize that our expertise, our education yeah. is value, and we recognize that all we got to do <clears throat> is to be able to have our message, to show, to uncover the value of our message so that we can take someone to, we can take someone, we can show someone how to go somewhere they don't know how to go themselves, or yeah. we can teach something to someone that they don't already know. 
that they will be willing to pay you a premium for that. For that. And that brings more happiness. Pardon? That brings more happiness. It brings more happiness. If yes. it brings more happiness for many reasons. If your if your measure of happiness is having impact, then it will yes. bring impact. If your measure of happiness was to elevate your income, then it has potential to do that as well. Right. And some people uh, believe that, well, I I'm, I'm it's not about the money. I just want to have I just want to change lives. I just want to help people. Then yes. Wouldn't, does, it, does, it stand to, does it stand to be true if you are able to get out there, put your message out there, teach people what they don't know, that you will change their lives? For so sure. either way, you win. <laughs> yeah, that's ultimately, yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for, for this wonderful answer. Okay, so we'd like to do some rapid fire questions. Okay. <laughs> so that our audience can also enjoy some insight. Of <clears throat> so one of my favorite questions is, to you is what is your favorite word for this year so everybody choose their word i'm going to do this but not a line of sentence what is your favorite word and why what is your favorite word for this year for you this year is abundance wow hey <laughs> abundance abundance now now tell us like why if it is too personal to you now but abundance. No, uh, not at all because last year was <clears throat> Right. Last year was abundant. I mean, last year I had some of the best months in my business that I've seen. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so, and, and of course, when I create abundance, I create abundance for everyone else. So true. Abundance wow. makes the world go around. When I'm successful, you're successful. Well, when I raise my energy, you raise your energy. So abundance true. is going to turn around what we believe to be a disaster last year yes. into the, the, be the, the best of our years for the rest of our years. Wow, wonderful. I hope everyone is listening, all this lovely audience around the world, and they can type down their favorite word of the year. So maybe later, I and Dr. Grace Lee can also just share their input too. Well, second question is, what excites you in the world most? What, what excites, excites you, you? What excites you most in the world? What excites me is potential. Wow. Right. Because potential is not something that you can measure. Yes. But it's something that you can see a tendency towards, right? If, if I look at the way humankind has has evolved yes. since the industrial era in the 1750s, that industrial era, we've come such a long ways. Look at the way that communication was in that era, right? They had to talk in person. They had to travel long distances. Yes. The gestation period between sowing and reaping was years, right? Yes. And now... Like everything is like a turnkey solution. Communication is instant. And that's yes. what human potential is. And that always excites me because wow. of potential and what potential. we can create. Wow, that's, that's a great word. Okay, among all the human rights which we have, uh, what is the one most important right the world should not take away from any woman, especially? So we women have a lot of rights, but one important right that world should not take away from women. The right to say and to right to speak our heart. So that's communication. Wow. That's, that's very profound. That's very heart touching. Yeah. That's, that's very nice. Yeah, because words uh, have power. The power. That's great. So women out there, this is, this is one, of the, one of the most important rights, Dr. Grace Lee, that it should not be taken away from women. Now, it's similar to that. Uh, among all the human rights, what is the one most important right that the world should not take away from any men? I would say it's the same. The right to speak from the heart, the right to communicate, okay. and the right to use our words as, and think of them as sowing seeds into the garden yeah. of our future. Wow. That's very profound. Great. So... What is the best thing you like about planet Earth? The best thing I like about planet Earth yes. is the fact that, you know, the sun goes down and it comes up again the next day. The sun comes wow. down and it goes up again. It always does in the same direction, you know, east and west, east and west. I like that, the fact that it does that, because that means that time doesn't, it's a reminder that time doesn't wait for anyone. And it's a reminder that time is the most important thing. It's infinitely more important and more valuable than money 
and that and yeah. all of the material of things that we could we could possibly we could possibly think for that we could possibly think that we want right and so True. there's so many things on earth on planet earth that are, are reminders of True. what is important right and uh, reminders of the abundance there's so many clues hidden on earth on how to succeed in nature okay. as well so okay. those are all the things that i like about it lovely that's great uh, okay another one is what one thing you like to carry when you go out of your home when i go out of home what do i like to carry yeah what is the one most important thing you like to carry with you when you go out of home outside doesn't matter even you're going for a grocery shopping or a business meeting <laughs> okay. or even so, anywhere so outside <laughs> of wallet and keys which are necessary right you okay outside of the wallet and keys which is necessary yes of course that's very common now it's like you cannot just go without your um, your wallet and your cell phone yeah, yeah. what so is outside- one is the Mm-hmm. So outside of those two things the answer is nothing. Wow. <laughs> and why would you say that? Because I like to travel light. Okay. Yeah, I believe That's in good. traveling light. Uh I don't even carry a purse. Wow. <laughs> I just I like just to go out wallet and keys and just and just travel light because when you travel light you can travel faster and farther. Wow. I like that. Faster and farther. That's good. So uh which is your favorite place to live in the world? Well right now I'm in Vancouver, Canada and I I'm quite <laughs> enjoying it here. But if I were not in Vancouver, I would say that there were two cities that I have lived in uh, that oh. I've been to that I wouldn't mind living in. One of them is San Diego in California and the other okay. one is Sydney. And Sydney. I would say that there's one that's a close one as well which is Singapore. I I've, I've lived yes. there for about 1 year. and yes. I, i would say that those are my favorite places to live oh wow that's great so maybe after covid is done and everything is normal and everything probably you're going to take your wallet and uh, yeah, nothing else you're going to run there <laughs> <laughs> we will we'll check on your social media now dr grace lee she's there in yeah. singapore sydney and san diego great thanks um uh which is your favorite happy song happy song yes yeah. Um interesting. I spend most of my days unplugged meaning that I don't have a habit of listening to music. How about you sing? Are you a bathroom singer or a bedroom no, singer? Actually, no. Yeah. Somehow I tend to like the peace and silence. I I tend to like the peace. Good. Have you ever created your own song? Do you write poems and songs? No, I have not. Oh good. Okay, here is the another one. It's a funny one. If you are traveling um inside the elevator, you're going higher as building around 50 60 floors and the elevator gets stuck and there are three handsome men inside and you by yourself. What would you do? Uh I would You're stuck inside the elevator and there are three handsome men inside. Yeah, I would coordinate I would coordinate actions with them to see how we can get out of there. Okay. and then if you think you're stuck more than 10 minutes what would you do <laughs> I think yeah I would need to coordinate action with them okay. like there's four of us four of us let's put our heads together and figure us okay. figure out how we can get out of there so we can get on with our day <laughs> <laughs> Okay I'm going to add on on this what if that three men can read your mind What if they could read my mind Yes Well then they would be able to um see how busy it is <laughs> they be able to, <laughs> they be able to extract all of the ideas i have in my business and how i'm going to serve people you know they'll okay. be able to um you know tap into some of my opinions on things yeah that might be dangerous <laughs> <laughs> see now you changing your mind <laughs> because at that moment you will be thinking something else that i'm for sure that oh my god there's he and somebody i'm stuck in the elevator and you must be trying to just be nice so that i can get out <laughs> Great, great. Okay. Uh, another question is kind of a very strange question. What if you are looking at planet Earth from above the Earth? What is the most important thing you will look first? Outside. So let's say you're not on planet Earth, you're above another planet, but you can see planet Earth. What would you be looking and thinking at that time? Oh, I think that I would be so overwhelmed with the beauty that I see. I'd be so okay. overwhelmed with it. Uh I would I would study I would okay. study the way the earth moves I would study the you know the textures that I see from the outside I would study the yes. way the moon is 
re- revolving around it. I would study yeah. the way it's tilted. Oh my gosh, I would be so overwhelmed wow. by the beauty of it. I would, yeah, yeah I, I, I would be speechless at that time. <laughs> Great. And apart from being your uh, being a business and wonderful Korean business coach and being a doctor and all, do you like watching movie? And which is your favorite funniest movie have you watched or uh-huh. all time favorite? Yes, comedy movie. <sighs> Oh, that's a good question. I do like watching movies, actually. I used to be more of a movie butt than I am now. Uh, okay. a, a comedy? Oh, I can't, I can't think of a comedy that I really enjoy. I'm more of an action person. Action movies? Yeah, I'm more of an action fight scenes kind of person <laughs> than oh, <wow>. a comedy. <clears throat> If I had the choice between action or comedy, I would choose action every time. So okay. I would say that there haven't been a lot of comedies that i've seen compared to action movies unfortunately yes wow and what are your favorite books which one you're reading right now and which is your all-time favorite book okay i'm reading several right now okay uh, okay i'm reading a book called uh, no bs marketing to the affluent which is written by okay. dan kennedy he's the founding forefather of uh, direct response marketing i'm okay. also reading a book uh called uh, Catalyst, which is how to yeah. read people's minds, Persuasion, it's on Persuasion. Wow. Yeah, I'm also reading another book called The, um, the Weapons of Mass Instruction. And wow. it's about the, old, <clears throat> the education system. Yes. And I'm reading another one um, that is, oh, what is that one called? Um, that one is called, uh, it's about um, rocket fuel. I'm rereading Rocket Fuel, that one. Oh, wow. That's, that's about business systems and business strategies <clears throat> uh, from zero to one million. Oh, wow. Fantastic. And one. what is your all-time favorite book that you might go back and read again? All-time favorite book? I think that... Oh, wow. There's so many. There's so many. <laughs> okay, let's say in the business genre. Okay, let's narrow it down to the business genre. Okay. <laughs> I would say that in the business genre, one of my favorite books is called The Road Less Stupid. Oh, wow. Yeah. And yes. it was Road really Less bad. Stupid. Yeah, The Road Less Stupid. And yes. it, really, it really talks about the importance of thinking as an entrepreneur. Yes. Yeah. Great. And, and, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, good. No, that's good. And also, we know that you're also an author too, which is, would you like to tell our audience, which is your book and what's the name? Sure. The first one is called um, my, uh, Million Dollar Story. And that's, oh, wow. where, yeah, that's where I share my story on my, my origin story on where okay. I started out. And it, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a, a, a memoir. Okay. Although I'm not old enough to write a memoir, but it's kind of <laughs> like that. <laughs> and the other book is a book that not very many people read because it has a lot of science in it, but it's called The Neuroethics of Behavioral Neuroscience. It's called The oh, Ethics wow. of Behavioral Neuroscience. Ethics of behavioral the, neuroscience. Behavioral neuroscience. So, audience out there, check it out. <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay. Um, another last two questions quickly, yeah. and we will wrap up now. And what one question would you like to ask to the world that related to, towards happiness? So that later on YouTube and wherever the social media, that you can come back and also answer all the audience. So what is your question to the world, to the beautiful people of the world, towards happiness, would you like to ask? Yeah, I would say that what does happiness mean to you? What does happiness mean to you? Like, and when I, when I ask that question, I'm really looking for the story behind happy. Because a lot of times when we feel frustrated and all those other feelings, there's a story yeah. that we're telling ourselves which creates that emotion. So I would challenge the same thing about happiness. What is the story that is created, you know, that evokes those feelings of happiness? What is that? What does it mean to you? Wow. Now, there's another question is, what one question world should ask you that you can reply later on the contents on YouTube and all related to any specific field? What one question that you think that I'm really excited to always answer about it that will create more abundance, as you said, and also happiness? That one, one question, or they can ask several, doesn't matter, what one important question they should ask in, in the sector you want the world should ask you? 
anything around the principles of living well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And when I say living well, I mean, yes. you know, not just happiness, but I also mean yes. in life and career and in business. Wow, wonderful. That's great. Well, we are really happy, and I'm so happy, uh, Dr. Grace Lee, here today that you have spent your precious uh, time to share your insight and your journey. I know it is not still you sum up, we don't have much time, but that's a wonderful information and principles and uh, secret you have shared about regarding happiness. And uh, I hope that you will definitely get more abundance. You have already abundance. And you are um, a very special first guest on my show. It's called the Happy Conversation Show. And we will continue to bring more uh, profound people who have uh, achieved massive happiness during their adversity and defeat. So that's what our theme is. And you shared about your personal life story. It's really touching. And tell us our audience, like how they can reach to you if they have any questions. I would say that it's follow me on YouTube, you know, Dr. Grace okay. And on LinkedIn, also Dr. Grace Lee, those are the best two flat platforms to find, <coughs> excuse me, to find out more about what I do and yes. to get some more deeper insights on everything we talked about. That's great. Okay. And I just like to say in last, um, what is one favorite, your favorite word is, which create happiness or maybe a line, which is a, any favorite word or a line that can enlighten and bring happiness? What do you like to share? It would be, I am good enough. Yeah. <laughs> I am good enough. So people out there, that's the mantra. Uh, Dr. Grace Lee has said, I am good enough and I can do it. I've done in past and I can do it now and I can do it in future. No other people's opinion can become your reality. And with this lovely Hold it hand and once there, thanks so much, Dr. Gersley, and thanks to all the wonderful, lovely audience out there who's been watching. And I will wait for all your questions on YouTube so that Dr. Gersley and I can answer that soon. And thanks so much, Dr. Gersley, for your precious time. My pleasure. Thanks. Thank you.